I'm kind of obsessed with rice fish and I haven't even started my project with him yet, but for whatever reason, I'm just super into him. So we have two other varieties of rice fish that we got, again, from Aquahuna. I think this time we're gonna use something actually kind of normal to open the box. Ho, 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 here we go. We got a couple bags here. This is a, <laughs> this is one giant bag of fish, guys. There's two types in here. I think they're bagged like six to a bag. So we got 12 of the black midnight Madakas. I think that's what they're called. They have some crazy names. And then we got another six of, you can't really see them here, but they are the Koi Madakas. Kind of a spendy fish. They were like 12 bucks a piece. Let's try and do this without cutting open any of the water bags. We got a bag inside of a bag inside of a bag. It looks like these might be, are these individually bagged? I'm not sure, but I think everybody is alive. It looks like one, two, three, four, five, six. Yo, can you double check the count on these, bro? Have you ever been this close to a fish before? Everything looks alive, which is a good sign. So we're gonna get these out of the bags. We're gonna put them into some tanks where you can actually see them. And then we'll talk a little bit more about them, I guess. So we have kind of a weird setup going on right now because these fish are only gonna be in here for like a day or two. We actually just use water from one of the tanks above me here and that way we're using really good water that is gonna be safe for the fish. These guys are eventually gonna go out into some ponds but I gotta tidy up a few things that came a little bit sooner than I thought uh, or you know, I just bought them too soon. Not sure which is true, but all is well. Let's check out the fish. So all the ones that were individually bagged are my expensive koi madakas. They look really cool and they have this like orange head and then white body. At least that's why I'm assuming they individually bagged them because they wanted them to travel extra, extra safe. Whereas these guys, I guess they get the coach treatment and they just get to sit with one another in a bag, six in each. And these are the black Madaka. I think they have another cool name. They got a hyphenated name thing going on, but those are really cool fish to contrast the white ones that we have inside. And yeah, so the plan is to keep as many of these outside as possible because that's where where they're gonna thrive. They're definitely a cold water fish and they're another one of those really good ones to keep outside. I actually haven't ever had rice fish before, but something about them kind of being like mini little koi fish got me really hooked. Not 100% sure exactly what happened, but when I get into something, I get into it. So, so we're going after this and we're gonna really try and breed them. We're gonna try and keep them as separated as possible, hence why we kind of have to bust out a few tanks here and make sure we have everything set up outside. And then we're gonna take some of them and leave them inside. Haven't really figured out how exactly I'm gonna do that with the temperature and everything, but eventually I wanna have right behind you a big old rack where we can do our guppy breeding, our legit fish food experiments, and, and also just breed the heck out of some rice fish because it seems like it's pretty easy. Time travel with me for an undisclosed amount of time into the future. Little rice fish update for you. Even though we don't have them in a rack and they're on the floor, the babies are doing good. Looks like we had some more eggs hatch. Maybe even this morning. I checked on here and there definitely wasn't this many fish in here. Well, they could have been just hiding though. But so these are some more of the midnights. Their parents are up here. Pretty frequently laying eggs in our mops. And then I started to put like a little bit of pond scum and some sylvinia just so there's some microorganisms and other, you know, macroorganisms that we can't see that they can feed on. I have been throwing in some really sieved, crushed up, like I just do a little, get it on my fingers and then flake off what comes off. That seems to be maybe it's small enough or at least it'll attract some organisms that can then grow and feed our little baby fish. There's just some pond scum and algae in there that our platinum babies are eating. There's like one, they're super hard to focus on. Still haven't gotten our kois to breed yet. I don't know if it's uh, a ratio problem or what, but I haven't seen any eggs on our mops up here. Not sure what the deal is with that. I'm still working on getting good at sexing these fish. They're kind of hard to be honest, or at least, you know, at least for me. Also wanted to mention that, you know, you get a little bit of surface film on these standing waters, and that's also a food source for these baby fry. I check these things pretty regularly with the, uh, the main test strips that I'm using a lot these days. So I'm basically looking for nitrite. You know, ammonia is something I'm probably not gonna see, but nitrite is definitely something that will pop up. And every once in a while, I do stick an ammonia stick in there, but I haven't had any issues with it so far. There's not a lot going on. Obviously, these tiny fish aren't really gonna produce that much. The food that we put in could be an issue though, especially if they're not eating a lot of it. So I, I've been following these very closely as the days go on. And you know, hopefully we're gonna get these guys off the floor and onto a really cool rack here soon. So we'll make some tweaks to the setup and probably try and optimize the little tub environments a little bit better 
and then I'll go through and probably make a video like explaining it in more detail so you can get the full picture. Anyway, it's super hot today. Let's check on the main rice fish pond, 85, not bad. Our moms have been super buried lately. It's hard to pick up on camera, but when you look at a few of them from above, you'll see just a bunch of eggs poking off the side. And I'll try and overlay some footage of that that I was able to get on my phone. It's a little bit better to see what I'm saying. And then those fish just come through and they deposit their eggs on our mops. And I think the Sylvania won't be interfering with that. Like the root system here is pretty small but it's maybe possible, I don't know. I have seen fewer eggs, at least lately, since we added this, and so I might have to go through, see if I can find some eggs, and then pull it out if, if these plants are competing. Of course, they could also rub off their eggs on some of the reeds here in this pond plant, so ideally, if you're really trying to optimize for rice fish eggs, you probably don't wanna have really anything that they could rub the eggs off on. We're trying to get the best of both worlds here, and I don't know what the right answer is. This is a problem I've had for a long time with this tank. I'm gonna try and show you as I get closer my three pearl karamis in the left top part of the tank will dart away so if I come in to feed they're gone and when I start to feed them anyway a bunch of the food that they're supposed to eat ends up getting skipped by them and you know they get something eventually but it's kind of annoying so my solution to the problem is I take a little pinch of legit community I stand back here and just salt bay it into the tank and it works perfectly with this food because you don't have to grind it up in your fingers as you sprinkle it in the tank. I designed the food this way on purpose, that way the bigger pieces get eaten by the garamis, the stuff that sinks a little bit faster, and then the smaller stuff that stays up at the top is gonna be game for everybody else. So in this case, the Ember Tetras, and my new thread fin rainbow fish that I got and didn't tell you about. You guys ever had it where you're at the fish store and there's a fish that you've always known about, you've never had because you never thought twice about them, and then something happens and you're just like, why have I never had that fish before? That's basically what happened to me with the Threadfin Rainbows when I was at Pisces this last time, and I picked up six of them. I was like on the ground in the fish store like, these fish are so cool, What? how did I not know this about them? I'll put a little overlay here of what I was witnessing in the store. Basically just the male on male behavior when they're kind of squaring up with one another. Those thread fins come out and they turn into like a crazy dragon creature and it was the coolest thing ever. I'd never seen that before. I never knew that about the fish really. Cause again, I never thought twice about them and I just had to have them. So again, we picked up six of them. We got three males, three females. They're chilling in the tank now. I haven't seen that type of behavior yet. I think they're more prone to do it in the morning, kind of like, you know, how rainbows always do everything in the morning. And I think they also make a good addition to the tank. But yeah, I just wanted to share that story. It doesn't happen very often when you get like awestruck in the, uh, in the fish store, but it definitely happened with these fish. I know we're deviating a little bit from the rice fish, which is maybe why you clicked on the video, but this is kind of cool. So if you saw the video, this was a while ago, I might have been two months ago where we decided to turn the CO2 off on this tank to see if we could try and keep the Monte Carlo in stasis mode. And I'm happy to say that I haven't trimmed this tank at all. The Monte Carlo is all pretty much the same. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that is a method that is something that you can do if you wanna try and keep your trees looking like your trees for as long as possible. This tank is not free of issues though, so we've had this type of algae. It's kind of like a weird fuzz algae that is stuck to the Monte Carlo kind of permanently, like you can't pull it off. I think the only way to get this stuff out of here would be to do like a chemical treatment or drastically do something about the environment that would cause it to die. That just doesn't seem like a realistic thing though. So we might do some type of a Fritz treatment in here. You know, the magical Fritz algae stuff that I've used in the past for different issues on this aquarium, but it's not so much of a problem that um, I've put the time into really thinking about it, to be honest with you. There's another type of green algae that is growing in this aquarium that is easily removed. It's just kind of a pain in the neck. So it's that other green stuff that likes to live in the hair grass and sort of like around everything else. We could also try to do like some Excel or something else if we didn't want to jump into, you know, using a harsher chemical. But just wanted to share that with you. I'm sure there's at least 12 people that were interested in how the Monte Carlo situation turned out. And interestingly, our Pinnatophyta did not die off and it's actually spreading around the tank, which is kind of interesting without having CO2. That's something that I've never experienced before. Our two random pieces of Laguigia 
are also super, super red. And we got a new potato going on. So I know some of you were a little disappointed that we took down the crazy one that was growing all over the sticker store. And to be honest, I kind of missed having a potato project going. It's like the easiest thing to just have going that you don't really have to worry about. And it, it just does its thing. So we're starting to get some foliage finally. This has taken almost, I don't know, like a month. It always takes longer than you think, especially these roots. We had a couple decide they wanted to start shooting off the sides there. It's just kind of fun because every potato is different. Like the last one had crazy good foliage. You know, we don't know what's gonna happen with this. It's just kind of a fun thing to do, why not? So are rice fish actually mini koi fish? No, they're not, but I'd say they're pretty dang close. Like coloration wise, obviously there's some big difference, but what I'm really talking about is just how sturdy they are outside. So like a koi fish, they can stay outside in most climates all year round. Rice fish are super popular in Japan, which is actually where they're found in the wild. People have been keeping rice fish in bowls outside in that climate year round for a super long time. The top of the water can even freeze over and the fish can be in kind of like a hibernative state down below, just kind of like koi fish and some goldfish do. So that's what I mean by they're kind of like the micro or mini koi fish. They're really good at handling temperature swings. So I believe the lowest they can be down in is like in the 40s, just, you know, so they're not frozen. And then even upwards of 90 degrees, 92 degrees, they're not gonna die. They might not be super happy about it, but they're able to tolerate that kind of stress and that swing in temp. That's actually one of the signals for them to be like in their breeding season, that and longer periods of daylight. So once you start getting like 14, 15, 16 hours of sun, those factors are gonna trigger the females to start producing a lot of eggs. So for me, like the hottest day during the summer, the surface temperature when we hit it with the gun might read like 90 degrees. But you have to remember, it's not 90 degrees down at the bottom of the pond. It might be five degrees cooler. And the fish are smart. I mean, they're gonna find where they wanna sit in the water column. And that's typically what happens during the day when this thing is in the period of full sun and it gets really hot. I see those fish more closely down towards the substrate. So they're trying to keep a little cooler. It's pretty cool, I mean, these fish are really fun. I come out every morning, I check the mops. It's fun to see like, did I get eggs today? Did I not? Do the females have eggs on their bellies? Like what's going on? It's just, it's kind of exciting. So I don't know, my fish nerd is coming out here talking about this stuff, but it really is pretty fun. So at this point we have three different color variants of the rice fish. So we got the platinums, the original ones that I got in this one. I wanna put the black midnight Madaka rice fish in a bowl that's behind you. And then I think we're gonna get those kois and we're gonna put them actually on the front porch in a small, like kind of darker planter so we can see those colors. But there's more types of rice fish out there and I have a lot of room for some more bowls. So I'm thinking we're just gonna kind of fill the whole backyard up with these things and just see how many we can collect over the next few months while we still have the perfect setup for getting those females to produce eggs and thus babies. One more cool thing to show you guys. So pond at night, we got my favorite setting on, on the LEDs. And remember what you're seeing right now is not quite as dark as what I'm seeing in real life. My camera just sucks. But I talked about finding a solution for illuminating the pond a little bit better. Here it is. Much easier to see the fish and of course the plants down to the bottom of the substrate. And all this is, is a little clip LED. It's meant for clipping onto a book. It's rechargeable, so there's no wires. We just clip it onto the pond and it works perfect. Not sure how long this actually stays on. I really only turn it on when I'm, you know, out here looking at the pond. I think this is probably the best solution. And this thing costs like $7. I'm gonna be putting these things on all of the other ponds that we do light up designs with. I wasn't sure about the Pogo Stamon octopus plant being like a good pond plant, but it's turned out to be awesome. It's already grown too tall for this one. So yeah, there's a little nighttime update for you and we don't leave this on all night, of course, so cycle through to off and then I also turn off the LEDs. So yeah, that's what's going on here. If you guys have rice fish and you really know what you're doing, feel free to tell me all the things that I'm doing wrong with mine down in the comments and teach me something. I wanna learn, I wanna become like an expert rice fish breeder, I don't know why but I just, I do. I think we're finally gonna get a pond set up for the black rice fish, hopefully gonna be the next video, so don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss that one. I'm excited, it's a kind of a cool design. It's like a pond on top of a pond that's upside down that doesn't have water in it, so it's not really a pond. It'll be cool, I think. So anyway guys, thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.